Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, rabbits with red tails and protecting lambs with a lamp and a lump of lump tonight. We have more fox facts from Mike Powell with Ad Foxing. First, some said it couldn't be done, others said it shouldn't be done. After three years of trying, I am very proud to bring you not ferreting for rabbits, but bumblebeeing for mice. Oh yes. Physics says that bumblebees can't fly. Well, here's something else that probably can't fly, but let's give it a go. It's called terrestris because it goes underground like a terrier and it bolts mice. And uh, the point is these are queens flying. They're stocking up with nectar and they're finding mouses' nests in which they make their nests. Uh, they go into the mouse nest smelling the mice, which smells strongly of a chemical called acetamide, and then emit this sharp noise, which I hope we'll be able to record, as they go into the nest and the mice are terrified and flee in front of them because they sting like whatnot and the mouse does not like that so uh, you can use them for uh, the terriers and bolting mice. The story goes back not just to my father's childhood but to the childhood of an old man he once met who told him a story. We're back in the 19th century. Here's the buzz. He and his brother were bored so they collected bumblebees in the garden and used their mother's hair nets and put them, uh, put the bumblebees into the mice's burrows in the larder, having draped hair nets over, and uh, bolted the mice out and dispatched them. So we're going to catch some bumblebees, and we're going to put them in a bird feeder, from which some of the furniture has been removed, like this, all right? Uh, and you catch them in that, and then you go to the mouse's nest, because once a bumblebee is frightened, it flies towards the light. So we catch them in that, and then we put this against the mouse's nest, and then you put in the plunger at the other side, and you push the bee gently. So the bee comes out into the uh, mouse's nest, and then she'll go into cover, and then you block her in. Having netted the exits, you should find uh, the mice running nicely. Well, that's all very well in theory, but does it work in practice? First, you need bumblebees. Lots and lots of bumblebees. It's the day of the great eclipse. Here it is. Missed it, so did I. And so did the bumblebees. They're out in force. Some are sipping nectar, some are looking for mouse holes, and some are simply sunbathing. We only managed to get a tiny clip of the sound a mouse facing bumblebee makes. That's the, that's the Missed it. Mouse Here mouse it is again. Stand. Now let's look for mice. We're after field mice and you should know this is indoor sport too. It also works on house mice. There are holes all along this sunny bank. As any sportsman will tell you, the best laid schemes are mice and man gang after glee. We're going to introduce this to the mouse's nest. Oh. Wherever it may be. Alright, yeah. Put that in there for the mouse. Oh, she's out. Let's get right. And then here she comes. Out again. Let's get It's not as easy as, uh, as, no. as, as all that then. No, no, it's, it's definitely. Highly skilled. <laughs> highly skilled work. But uh, you, in fact, you, could, you could say, you know, if ferreters really have it easy. Oh, yes, dead easy. You've got a, an animal that's keen on its game, and here you've got an animal that desperately doesn't want to do what you want it to do. Of course, mice have the same protection in British law as hares and foxes. You aren't allowed to chase them with hounds. The next thing you need to do is net the mouse holes. First, father puts out the tiny net. In goes the bee, and this happens. Don't worry, she's got away! Well, that was a success. Maybe we should have hive-fived. Hive-fived, get it? Let's go straight to the post-match interview. Before we get into the biology, let's, let's just start with the, um, the general principle seemed to have worked. Yes, yes, <laughs> very exciting indeed, yes. It's extraordinary how a little general natural history knowledge does enhance life in the countryside. It does, exactly. Yes. Now, we're talking about one kind of bumblebee here, aren't we, <clears throat> terrestrious? Uh, yes, that's the one we've got in the garden, but there's a, uh, another common one, the white-tailed bumblebee. 
This but is the buff-tailed bumblebee. Does the white-tailed bumblebee go underground? Yes, both very similar. Oh, OK, so the traditional bumblebee-looking bumblebees. Yes, yeah, so they they'd all work probably. Yeah. And this is the one we're looking at. This is the buff-tailed bumblebee, yep. as opposed to the white-tailed bumblebee. But it doesn't really matter for all purposes. Almost any of these will do. To be or not to be, on a bright spring day like this, I say, it's nobler to be. It's a runner, it's a runner. Who needs Scottish stags? The buzz was just as good. Buzz, get it? Right, from bees to bugs, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. It was the largest protest that German hunters have ever organised. More than 15,000 hunters and country people came together in the German city of Dusseldorf to protest against local lawmakers disregarding hunting as part of conservation. The Welsh Government has commissioned research to find out what people do in the Welsh countryside, but they've left out shooting and hunting. Why not take part in the survey? Go to bit.ly forward slash Wales survey. And when it comes to the question, what are your main reasons for visiting the countryside? Select other and please specify. The RSPCA has dropped its last remaining court case involving a hunt. It had been trying to find ways of prosecuting Will Breyer, master and huntsman of the Catistock hunt, but decided that what it calls covert surveillance evidence, wrong on all three counts, would not stand up to scrutiny. Crocodile trophy hunting is back on the agenda in Australia's Northern Territory. It came after last week's news that Australia was planning to ban lion parts in order, claimed the government, to stop canned hunting in Africa. Allowing the trophy hunting of a limited number of domestic crocs is the political price Environment Minister Greg Hunt may have to pay. And finally, there's another Top Gear presenter in hot water. News emerged this week that Richard Hammond, a keen shooter, shot a peacock on a friend's estate in Hertfordshire during a shoot day. Not an easy mistake to make. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, Mark Strat Stratton here, out with Brian. Brian. Oh, the oh there's a rabbit just laid it out! <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing! <laughs> good morning Charlie, I'm Thais, I came from Holland. I shoot from in this morning three crows in this beautiful morning. Hello Charlie, I'm Peter, I'm Nick. We've been out lamping tonight over in Sussex, and this is what we got tonight. And as if by magic, one should appear. Well done Brian. <laughs> That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Please keep them coming. Now, Roy likes to double up on his hunting trips. Today he's out with a red tail, a ginger giant, a couple of lamps, and a 243. The big priority tonight is lamb protection. Twins are especially vulnerable. Protecting two youngsters, it's much harder than one. But tonight we've got a two-pronged attack. We've got Jordan the Ginger Giant out with us again, and he's got his red tail out, for, and it's going to be her last night of the season. Hopefully she'll put a couple in the bag, and then that's going to be the end of her season, so she's going to go into molt. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head off into the sheep fields, and we've been having a lot of problems here with foxes taking the lambs. We've shot four foxes over the last few nights, but unfortunately the, the lambs are still being taken. And it, quite interestingly, it's not just the, the very young lambs, the newborns that are being taken. Last night we had two lambs taken that were four or five days old. So there's definitely something coming in there that's gonna cause us problems throughout the, the lambing season. Before Roy gets foxy, we're heading off into the arable side of the farm to give Jordan's red tail some exercise. She's an American red tailed buzzard. I've had her for about three years now, it's her third season, and it's the first year we've been lamping with her. And she's taken to it really well, and she's been, hopefully, we're going to see tonight how she's been, how she's doing. But this is her last time out this season, so let's see what we can do. This is Jordan's first bird, and she's done really well for him, but it's been a while since she's been on the Argo Cat, and it might be putting her off her stride, or rather, her wing beat. 
The first flight shows she's not yet got the blood pumping. No, that was a shame with that one. We were uh, well within uh, catching distance of that one, but unfortunately the rabbit stopped rather than running and uh, it just stuck down in the crop and so it went completely out of sight, so she lost sight of it and uh, obviously she can't pursue it if there's no light on it. To remove the Argo from the equation, bunny number two is walked up. This time she gets close, but the talons don't connect. Well, that was a bit better. I think um, she's not been overly happy going around on the Argo, so Jordan jumped out on that one. We found a rabbit in a seat or squatted in the, uh, in the field there. He just jumped out, walked it up, and she had a nice little flight on that one, so hopefully she's uh, waking up a little bit. Fingers crossed we'll get a few good flights and hopefully end on a kill. Roy suggests one last blast as she's clearly off form. This time she strikes hard and the rabbit's in the bag. He's just opening it up, just let her have a little bit of blood because obviously she's been a little bit unsure of getting going. So, you know, this time of year birds are starting to, or a lot of birds are already in breeding condition. Um, you know, we're not far off having eggs. So where she's now a mature bird, they do start feeling the hormones as well. So, you know, this time of year they can be a little bit... Um, up and down and to uh, how they fly. Next, Roy turns his attention to the foxes, but it's really hard going. Maybe they're so full on lamb, there's no need for a cheap meal courtesy of Mr Lupton. This is obviously what the fox was sitting looking at and waiting for. These two have been born tonight. They're still very, very weak on their feet. You can see they're just struggling up there. They are the cutest things, aren't they? But uh, as I say, the fox was just sitting at the back there, uh, probably just waiting to come in. So these are only a few hours old, I would have said, by looking at those. But unfortunately, at the moment, they are prime on the fox's menu. They are being extremely shy, staying deep in cover, and the light has them running. Nothing ventures into the open field, and there appears to be as many badgers as there are foxes, which gets Roy pondering. Tonight we have seen so many badgers patrolling the fields. Um, we've probably seen upwards of a dozen badgers out there and it does leave me wondering or, you know, maybe sus suspecting that the badgers are slightly more responsible for uh, taking some of the lambs than uh, I'd given them credit for before. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think we've definitely taken the, the cream off the top of the foxes. Um, but, unfortunately, in today's countryside, there's not a lot we can do about the badgers. Thankfully, no lambs were taken this evening, but more have been taken since in daylight and at night, so they may be shy, but Roy needs to work all his magic to keep the casualties to a minimum. Was Roy suggesting that badgers eat lambs, and there was me thinking they just ate hedgehogs and ground nesting birds? Right, up next, the old dog himself. It's Mike Powell. Baiting and bait points. There's nothing very clever about it. I usually stick to something like a rabbit that I've let go off a bit, um, anchor it. Normally I wouldn't use cord, I'd normally re use a rabbit snare or a fox wire because they will nip through that with no trouble at all. And you pick a spot where you know foxes will travel, which is most places, Obviously a bait point is what it is, a bait point, but it's quite handy to attract along the line of generally a hedge, a handful of dog biscuits and any, this is pedigree actually, so this is good quality for me, dog food or cat food, if you use cat food and you get tuna or something really smelly, that's very good, mix it up and just scatter a little bit of it, you don't need very much. The other thing I always use when I'm doing a, a bait point is a trail camera. I can then keep a record of what's actually been there. It's not a lot of point putting bait out and going in the morning and finding it's gone. You want to know it might be badgers, it could be all sorts. This is a spy point and I just put one of those nearby and you'll find what's been there in the night. And then if you want to take that particular fox out, um, I set them here, which is just outside my place. Foxes that cause no trouble generally don't get bothered. But if there's one that I recognise that I know has been causing trouble, well then it goes. But it's always quite handy with a trail camera 
if you set it on video obviously the infrared will come on generally at bait points foxes get used to it very quickly but I find that if I'm waiting within 60 or 70 yards or that sort of range I can use night vision without any infrared on the night vision because when the infrared um, video function comes on the trail cam you can use that infrared through your night vision and you can use that as a source of infrared it does light up the area and the fox perfectly well great stuff mike thank you david thinks you look a bit like clint eastwood so from the wild west to the wider world of hunting on youtube it is hunting youtube This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. We Europeans reckon we know it all about woodcock shooting. Well, here's how they do it in Arkansas with American woodcock. This film is put out by the State Wildlife Department. Staying unashamedly American, fox shooters will want to see this. Downwind outdoors heads to South Fork Outfitting, Illinois, to escape the deep snow of New York and to have a go at local coyotes. Here's a look back at a classic Real Tree Road Trips episode where Michael Waddell is joined in Texas by country musicians Blake Shelton and Miranda Lamb. But the couple get their white tails with bow and pistol. Always good to know what you are shooting at. This guy doesn't. Eric C is on a snow goose shoot in South Dakota and knocks down a Ross goose. It's okay, it's legal. The spring goose hunt in one of the Russian stands I've never heard of, Tatar stand, is well told here, though in Russian. There is jolly music and good filming, so you will get the picture. Browning's French Channel is marketing its morale rifle with this film about stalking Roebuck in the Midi Pyrenees, just west of Toulouse. Service UK is getting better and better. Trophy Muntjac Hunt, the three buck grand slam, has a Scottish Monty connoisseur after a metal buck. And finally, the hunting website shootingpress.com has a good YouTube channel and brings out a driven wild boar hunt set to music. It's a big day in Slovakia. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube, or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you didn't like any of those, how about some of this? It's Schools Challenge TV. This week it's the first leg of the Schools Challenge round of competitions that will lead to a £12,000 car going to some lucky under 21. It's the Oxford Schools Challenge and more than 200 kids got together to shoot it out. Click on the link on the screen. Well, we are back next week, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, or pop your email address into our constant contact box so we can constantly contact you about our programme, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Now, before I go, I have to say, happy birthday, Nick Farmer, your daughter, Jen, sent that to me. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>